angel Gabriel appeared to Lady Miriam, peace be upon her, and gave her the news of the pure child she would give birth to. Lady Miriam was scared of how people would react when they found out. People had already started gossiping. This caused Lady Miriam so much heartache that she decided to isolate herself from these people, and she found refuge in the desert. She felt dejected. After the birth, when Lady Miriam arrived with baby Asa, or Jesus, peace be upon him, she received taunts and nasty words from people. They questioned how could she be pregnant when she had been untouched. This pious lady had spent her entire life in devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and now she was a victim of people's accusations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defended Lady Miriam's honor, making her baby Asa speak from his cradle to protect her reputation. I am a servant of Allah. He has appointed me as a prophet amongst you and am the bearer of the book, the Injeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted me bounties of benevolence and made me obedient to my mother. I will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey all his laws for as long as I live. After hearing Baby Isa's words, the people realized that Lady Maryam was pure and his birth was a sign of Allah's miracles. People accepted Maryam after the child started talking, but before then, they made her suffer a lot. Lady Maryam suffered because people were not able to accept her truth. They would not accept it because they did not know the truth. They had never witnessed a child born without a father, and they did not consider that for God Almighty, it was easy to change or replace one of the causes, the father who gives life to a child. It was a completely new chapter for these people, although they did not know Allah had created Adam without two major causes, without a mother and without a father. He was conceived or created from the clay. In March of this year, my mother and I were verbally attacked just because we were Muslim while on a walk in our neighborhood. I didn't know what to do in a situation like that and opted to just ignore the person and walk away. I was boiling inside, but didn't want the situation to escalate in fear that the person would physically attack us. I didn't call the police, not wanting to cause a scene. The weeks that followed, I knew I had to do something about addressing this. This was where the idea of sharing our concerns with our non-Muslim communities was made. The hijab, it means a lot to me and I don't even wear it yet. This niqab is only for the purpose of staying anonymous. I converted about a year ago and the hijab, it has not been easy but god willing i will wear it soon because it has truly found a place in my heart each day without it feels like something is missing Hello, alaikum. my name is zahara and i live in australia i became muslim about a year ago at that time i was living by myself so i took my hijab right away but after a few months i moved back in with my family and they don't know that i'm muslim so when i go out of my house i have to wear a booty and leave the house like many fellow sisters, my journey with the hijab has created some trials for me. I have faced challenges and questions, not only from my family who's Christian, but also from fellow believers. People tell me that I'm taking the religion too seriously. The hijab is archaic, and that it is a sign of submission not only to Allah, but to man. I have been told I'm not beautiful with the hijab. I have been told that people are embarrassed to be seen in public with me because of the hijab. I have also been told it's anti-American. People usually think if we cover our head, we restrain ourselves. Hijab takes away our freedom. For many people, freedom means eliminating all physical barriers. As they perceive hijab only as a physical thing, they see it as a barrier to freedom and naturally go against it. To some, it may just be hair, but to Muslim women, it means so much more. Firstly, it acts as a symbol of our faith and it expresses identity. Right now, it really hurts to see other hijabis yet not be recognized as their sister in faith. An added benefit of being recognized as a Muslim woman is avoiding awkward situations with the opposite gender. I believe a lot of uncomfortable questions would have been avoided if I wore the hijab. We believe that intimacy comes only after marriage, and this is only one value that the hijab expresses without words. For me, the practice of hijab is more than just a scarf. It's about striving to live up to the expectations set by Allah subhanahu ta'ala. They are transcribed in the Quran, which includes, but is not exclusive to, the wearing of a scarf. Wearing the scarf helps me to strengthen my relationship with Allah. 
It reminds me to do my absolute best to live up to the expectations set by Allah. It gives me strength and confidence and also serves as a religious identity. When I moved back in, I took my hijab off because at that time I did not feel comfortable off on it and I didn't think I was ready for it. But then after a few weeks, I took it back on because I saw many, many Muslim women, many, many Muslim influencers as a role model. And I looked up to the greatest role model of that was to me, which is Bibi Fatima Salamalea and her family. And it really encouraged me. I'm not gonna lie and say that uh, taking off my hijab did not make me happy or anything because it did, it did make me happy, but I needed to know that that happiness is only permanent only temporary and we will not get anything from it you'll not you'll never be happy if you don't like listen to your lord i found that out then after that i took my hijab on again in the end though it is the love and gratitude that we have for allah not wearing the hijab makes me feel incomplete and this is because I'm neglecting an obligation put by the one who has given me everything that I cherish. Imagine the pain of not being able to thank someone who has given you the world and more.